Hello and welcome back. This is the fourth and final video about section 3.1. In this video we will learn how to estimate the value of an integral using Monte Carlo estimation. Assume we want to approximate integral from a to b h of x dx. I'm not writing f here just because we used f for a different thing. So what can we do? I want to write an integral as an expectation so that I can use Monte Carlo estimates. And again the solution is to come back to the beginning of these notes. If you take a look of the bottom, at the bottom of this page here, you see that the expectation actually equals an integral. So we can make this happen if we manage to write things so that the h of x we want to integrate equals x times phi of x. So how do we do that? Well, h is what we are given, and now we need to pick a random variable. x and phi was the density of x, and we can choose and can make it so that it all works out. So there are different choices possible, but for this example here I want to just use x uniformly distributed on the interval from a to b. So choose x uniformly distributed on the interval from a to b. So for the uniform distribution I use this curly u. And for this x, now to apply this formula we need to find out what is phi. And the uniform distribution can take any value in this interval, but there is no points which happen more frequently. The density is constant over the interval, which means all values have the same chance of getting picked. So phi of x the density of x is constant inside the interval, so it is something inside the interval, and if x is not in the interval from a to b, x is not in the interval from a to b, and the value inside we can know, namely we know the density must integrate to 1, so if we integrate this constant from a to b we must get 1, and it turns out 1 over b minus a is the value we need if x is in the interval a, b. Let's just check. If we have x here, phi of x here, here is a, here is b, then I claim the value we should choose inside the interval is 1 over b minus a, and that checks out, namely if we integrate this function, then what we get is the area under the graph, and the area is a rectangle with width b minus a and height 1 over b minus a, so if I want the area I take width times height and b minus a times 1 over b minus a equals 1. So that is all good. Okay, so let's continue trying to line that up. I just switch back for a second. We want integral x times phi of x dx to be equal, oh, we have a choice. We choose actually the second formula this one. So we want integral f of x, phi of x dx to be equal integral h of x dx. And let's just write that. So we want expectation of f of x. We know that is equal to x times phi of x dx. And we want that equal, I write this exclamation mark just to say that's something we want to achieve. We don't know that yet. We want this to be equal to the integral we want to compute. So we want this equal integral a to b h of x dx. And now you see why I chose the uniform distribution on the interval a to b for phi. Namely what this does is on the left hand side in this expression phi is zero if we are not in the interval a to b. So that means outside the interval a to b, whatever we have is, I forgot the f again, f of x, here it's added. Outside this interval, whatever we have is multiplied by zero, so it doesn't count. So this integral effectively is going over the interval a to b. And now we just need to make it so that f times phi inside the interval equals h. Let's write this. So we need f of x times phi of x equals h of x. And we know what phi of x is, so that is f of x times indicator function a to b times 1 over b minus a. If I wanted to write it like that, so the, I use the indicator function to get this zero case right here. 
So that is f of x times phi of x. And now you see what we need. So the indicator function is not so important. So that here is 1, the indicator function inside the interval for all x in a, b. And now we can just solve this. So you see what we need to do. We should choose f of x is h of x times b minus a. And again, I use the freedom we have in the Monte Carlo estimates, this function f, we did not specify initially. You can choose this for each problem to do what you needed to do. And in this case, we need to get h. And solving this equation I've just written, we find the f we should choose is h times b minus a. So result is if x is uniform distributed on a, b, then expectation of, let's put the b minus a on the front, b minus a h of x equals integral from a to b h of x dx. That's found. And now I want to swap these terms so that I can continue with the expectation. Let me just do that. So then that we know how to approximate. We can approximate that as 1 over n, sum j from 1 to n. And here we need to write b minus a times h of xj, where xj are uniformly distributed on the interval a, b. And these are independent and identically distributed. Good. So that is the theory. And again, let's have a quick look about how this works in R. R, ah, we first need to choose a function a and an interval to integrate over. Let's just write this. What should we choose? h of x. Let's choose x squared, just because it's simple, from 2 to 3. That integral is simple enough that we can certainly work out the exact answer in the end to check what we get numerically. Let's just quickly work out. Integral 2 to 3 x squared dx equals, we need the primitive of x squared, but that's x to the 3 divided by 3. So we do 1 third x to the 3 in the limit from x equals 2 to 3. And that is 1 third 3 to the 3, which is 9 minus 1 third 2 to the 3, which is 8 over 3. You can write that as 19 over 3. For now, let's pretend we don't know the exact answer. So first thing, we need to pick n and choose a million again to stand for a large value. Then we need to choose x, which needs to be uniformly distributed in the range of integration, so n values between 2 and 3. That is easy enough. Now we need to find the function f. Let's just work that out. Let's just check. f of x needs to be h of x times b minus a. So in this case, f of x equals x squared times 3 minus 2. And 3 minus 2 is 1, so f of x is just x squared. So f of x is x squared. Let's write it like this. And then the result will be just the average of f of x. Let's run that. So what we get is 6.336082. If I run it again, 6.33 something else. So it seems to be around 6.33. Now what's the theoretical value? That is 19 over 3 which is 6.33333, so I would call that an excellent match, and we see this method also. This concludes our discussion of section 3.1. So what you should do now is to take the book and carefully read section 3.1 again. There are some more examples and some more details in the book, which I have not discussed here, but with what we have just discussed, that should be all very easy to understand.